we are talking tech firms. We're here at the European University Institutes so, uh, State of the Union Conference 2023. And with us is uh, EP Vice President Dieter Chalantsova. Very welcome. Thanks. Thank for you very in. much for the invitation. So, um, in your panel, you're actually discussing whether the European Union should uh, dis uh, create its own superstar tech firms. Now, um, to start off with, what is the greatest challenge that the EU actually faces to catch up mm. with the United States and China in terms of uh, digital technology? Mm. I think there are two main issues, uh, and it was crystal clear from the discussion today that what we like, one is the, the educational system. We have very good researchers in Europe. We have almost three million re academics and researchers in Europe. But the problem is how to translate it then into mm. practicality, into practical goods, practical services. And there where the problem is, where then I hear a lot of also uh, startups that are leaving uh, Europe because uh, they, they lack uh, the, the also skills because they don't have enough business skills to, to really transform their small startups and scale up. The second uh, problem that we hear very often is, of course, money venture capital. Uh, it's good that European Union launched EU venture program, but it's not enough from my point of view. We really need to get the member states engaged, that we need that the states is guaranteed, and then it's run by the private money, that we have a lot of public-private partnership projects. Uh, I don't want Europe uh, to decide uh, that we want to create in this country one European champion. This is not the way how Europe should operate. We should create the right, also legislative environment, regulatory environment for the companies to stay in Europe. Yeah, and of course, uh, there are many differences in terms of reg regulation if you compare the EU with the US mm -hmm. and, for example, China, who are doing very well on, uh, on, on digital technology. Is, uh, can that also be hampering uh, progress in that area? Well, I don't think so. Uh, I'm always the voice in the European Parliament for less regulation. And I also advocate for one in one out principle when it comes to new legislation. But at the same time, I think we have acknowledged over the time that there are issues that we need to tackle from the regulatory point of view. Uh, during this, uh, during the last four years, we managed to set up certain new rules for for digital uh, sector, Digital Services Act, Digital Markets Act, and these are the main pillars of the legislation in Europe. And for me, I always say it's better to have one EU set of rules than to have 27. Mm. Um, you talked about creating the right uh, environment for you know tech uh, firms to thrive in, in Europe. Um, could, could you maybe go into an example, you know, an area where there's a concrete opportunity to create such a better environment for, for, for firms? I think the, the opportunity is really that we manage to create a digital uh, single market uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, and we need to set up the clear principles uh, for European companies that they don't leave Europe. Uh, I, I see and I meet a lot of European companies that they started a business in Europe and then, then they left to US. So I want them to stay in Europe and perhaps the Americans can come over mm -hmm. to Europe. But for that to happen, we really need to have what also we've been discussing in Europe for a very long time, the EU capital market that we have a single market uh, in Europe, the real single market in Europe. So when it comes to capital market, that companies are free uh, to, to uh, set up their business when they want, that they can you know, uh, access the banks in every uh, member state's countries and to get very interesting offers from them, no matter of uh, their establishment. So these are really the opportunities for Europe when it comes to capital markets, when it comes to regulation uh, or, uh, in Europe, to creating the right business environment. And of course, we should not forget about the SMEs mm -hmm. that are the key pillar of the European uh, companies. We always create a special exceptions for SMEs, but once they start to grow up, 
they then are faced with the wall. They have to really uh, try to apply those uh, legislation rules that we created for the big ones. Mm -hmm. And that's the point where the companies come to me and they say, OK, I was SME up to now, but now if you want me to comply with all these rules, so either I have to hire hundreds of lawyers or I will just sell my company. So we have to also think about these issues and really talk with the, with the businesses to understand their needs. And we have uh, viewers uh, from around the world that follow uh, what's happening here at the European University Institute. And um, I'm wondering whether uh, you could uh, maybe help us understand what are some of the, the misconceptions that might exist about mm. the EU and technology. Mm. I think one of the misconceptions is that we are not as innovative as the US or China. And I would argue that we've been leading in many respects when it comes to digital field. We have, uh, um, we are home uh, to, to many uh, tech leading companies uh, in Europe. And uh, yes, there are the challenges that we have just discussed, but I would argue that there is a huge potential for Europe to become a real leader when it comes to tech. That's a great note to conclude on. Thank you so much, Dita Charanzova, for sharing some uh, insights from the inside about what's happening at the EU level in terms of uh, technology. Thank you very much for the invitation. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you.